Okay, people, let's get started. Hardy versus Hardy. That's mine. We're representing the wife. Depositions are getting started today. What are you doing handling a divorce? I asked her to handle it. I'm underwater. Matrimonial law is not Ansfield. Actually, Leland, my first job was with a firm that did exclusively matrimonial law. I have a fair amount of experience in it. That notwithstanding, in the future, I want all realignment or reallocation of firm resources to be done with the knowledge and consent of either Douglas or myself. And hey. Fortune comes a calling, Calliope woman, spinning that curious sense of your own. Can you answer? Yes, I can. But what would be the answer to the answer, man? Gentlemen, sorry for the delay. It's cool. You'll be deposing Mrs. Hardy today, right? Right. I think we should get started. Take it slow, let it grow. <clears throat> Would you state your name for the record? Carolyn Hardy. And you are currently married to Dale Hardy? Yes, I am. And how long have you been so married? 22 years. And over the course of those 22 years, you and your husband have accumulated a great many things. One of us worked. There's a house, two vehicles, several bank accounts. And whose name were all these things? They're in both of our names. Yet you saw fit to lock your husband out of the house. Did you not? He was using our house as a crash pad for other Grateful Dead fanatics. I asked him to stop on numerous occasions. He refused. I changed the locks. And you're asking that most of these personal possessions that you've accumulated, including the Grateful Dead memorabilia collection, be sold? Right again. One man gathers what another man spills. Dale, did it ever occur to you... That not everything that Jerry Garcia ever said was necessarily profound. Carolyn. And that not every situation in life can be summed up by Grateful Dead lyrics. Can I ask why the animus toward the dead? Not relevant. Could it be that you were once a deadhead yourself? Not relevant. She is not being analyzed here, Mr. Ritzik. She's the one who turned me on to the dead. She was into the dead before I was. Yes, and I was 18 years old when I did that. I'm 41 years old now. Our kids are grown up and out of the house. And at this point in my life, the most important thing to me is not the Grateful Dead. I do not want their posters on my walls. I do not want their bumper stickers on my car. What I want is to start over and do my best to try and forget how much of my life I spent being married to you. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hardy? I do a variety of things. Like what? Merchandising, for the most part. What do you merchandise? I run a clearing house uh, for Grateful Dead concert tapes. I also go to the concerts where I sell frisbees and beach balls, dog bandanas. It's what I do. How much does what you do produce an income? Uh, altogether or annually? Annually. About $12,000. Plus, this year, I traded some uh, concert tapes for a 1961 Volvo station wagon. Mr. Hardy, you made a practice, have you not, of following the Grateful Dead from city to city in order to attend their concerts? Yes, I have made it a practice. You traveled to Egypt for a Grateful Dead concert. Yes, I did. I still can't get over that you went and I didn't. Oh, man, Dark Star in front of the pyramids. Unbelievable. Oh, man, all other versions just pale in comparison. Including the 69 Fillmore West concert. Oh, including everything. Can oh, we keep man. going with this, please? Would you acknowledge, sir, that it was your wife who provided the funds for the purchase of your home? What difference does it make who provided the funds? If it was acquired in the course of the marriage, it's marital property. It's relevant to the disposition of assets. It's in no way relevant to the disposition of assets. I'm instructing my client not to answer. Would you acknowledge that it was your wife who provided the funds for you to go to Egypt as well as for a six-week stopover in Kathmandu? I'm going to object to that, too. I thought it wasn't supposed to matter who paid for what. Please talk to me, Mr. Hardy. You just answer me yes or no. Was I a good father to our kids? That is not the issue, Mr. Hardy, and you are not the one asking the question. Answer me. Was I or wasn't I? You don't need to consult with your attorney for an answer to that, do you? Yes, you were. You were a good father. Well, then what the hell are we sitting here arguing about money for? Because we find your demands regarding money to be unreasonable. I'm not a burnout, Carolyn. I'm not some kind of hustler, either. Mr. Hardy, I am not done with the deposition. Well, I am. I'm done with it. I'm not going to sit here like some kind of a criminal. I didn't do anything wrong. I like the Grateful Dead. I like their music. People all over the world like their music. There was Grateful Dead lyrics spray-painted on the Berlin Wall, man. So what? So what? 
So maybe they're not just another rock and roll band. Maybe they're on to something. Maybe there's more to being a deadhead than just the music. Maybe it's a little heavier than that. Alan? All right. Excuse me. In the interest of bringing this to a close, my client is prepared to make certain concessions. Mm, like what? We agree to let Dale have the house. One car and 50% of all monies held in their joint accounts. Scary movies, man. We may be able to settle this. I don't want the house. What do you mean? I mean, I don't want the house. She paid for it. It's hers. Dale, I'm willing to let you have it. What's the problem? I don't want to be the object of charity, man. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hardy, but up until today, weren't you in here asking for the house? changed my mind. Why? Because I don't want to give you the satisfaction of being able to say to all your friends with their suits and ties that your deadhead ex-husband got the house. Oh, and that's why I'm doing it, right, Dale? To talk about it. Carolyn, you don't have to force him to give you the house. Yeah. No, I should just leave it empty and see how long it takes him to move back in. Hey, I don't want to go back there any more than you do. I'm never going back. Oh, never say never, Dale. You may need a dry place to sleep one night. You know, I remember being at Watkins Glen. And the Grateful Dead are up on the stage. And you and me were right down there in the front. And Mickey Hart and Bill Kreutzman go into their dual drum solos. And the boys go into Not Fade Away, into St. Stephen, into the Eleven, and into Turn On Your Love Light. And I look over at you. You got on this crocheted top pink sunglasses and I just think to myself in this whole universe everything is right where it should be and I look at you now sitting here with your lawyer and I wonder how the hell I ever could have felt that way just make sure you get all my tapes back from her I'll sign anything you agree to You can arrange something with him? Yes. Okay, just let me know what it is. A small present before we start negotiating? Sure. Working man's dead, live dead, oxa moxa. What are these for? Consider it a gift. Ah. Oh. Caroline? Ann called to say she'd be running a little late. Okay. She said to read over all the papers. I read them. And she said to sign off the copies. It's a lousy thing, isn't it? Yeah. Can I get you anything? Tea, coffee, anything? No. I've been with this guy since I was 18. It's a long time. I had my mind made up that when the kids were out of the house, that was it. When Dylan started his freshman year of college, I served in the papers. Mm. Had you been thinking about it a long time? On and off for years. So maybe this is good. I mean, you did it, and now it's done. Oh, I don't want it to be done. I went through a lot with that idiot. This is hard. I know it's hard. I had an idiot like that once myself. You were with somebody for a long time? Yeah. Until I was 16, until I was 22. We weren't married, but it was like we were married. It was worse than being married. Why did the two of you break up? Oh, you know, we went our separate ways. I mean, to him, the idea of going beyond heaven you are on 86th Street was like going to another planet. Do you miss him? Yeah, I miss him. Look, do you think that Anne will be mad at me if I take these overnight to think about things before I sign? You're the client. You sign when you're ready to sign. What's with the suit? Dressed for a funeral. Don't let's get morbid, shall we? 
and the mustache? Well, you told me about a thousand times to shave it off. Think of it as a kind of a going away present. Since you're not moving back, I went ahead and brought some stuff that I thought you might want back the most. You may want to inventory the contents. Why don't we just get the agreement signed first? Oh, no. Go ahead. Inventory the contents. Um, I don't see anything pre-1970. Oh, yeah. No, way. I've got it. Those are all the A-shelf tapes. I didn't bring everything. Is the 1968 Matrix concert there with Paul Butterfield? I don't oh. know, Dale. I didn't go through them. I just don't see it. Well, I'm not holding out on you if that's what you're thinking. Avalon Ballroom, 1967? Winterland Strike Benefit, 1968? Clark University, 1969? Man, I, I, I gotta get those. Why don't you finish the inventory, Mr. Hardy? Hey, counselor, man, this is my life in this box. It might take me a little while to go through it. I'll do it. This is not your life, Dale. This is a box of stuff. These are your tapes. These are your overalls. This is your lucky hat. Here's your ticket stub collection. This is the crochet top I wore that impressed you so much. These are the pink sunglasses. You kept that stuff all this time? How do you want to get rid of it? She's offering you the items, Mr. Hardy. Do you want them or not? I want her to keep what's hers. Fine. I'll keep what's mine. Excuse me, I'm going to go to the ladies' room. Do you have sparkling water of any kind? I'll get you one. No, it's cool. I can get it. Kitchen's right there. Have you listened to those CDs yet? No, not yet. Is there any sparkling water of any kind? Hmm. Right here. Can I get you a glass? Not necessary. Your deal, right? Right. We took a little break. My wife's upset. I talked to your wife yesterday. I know she's upset. Why was she upset yesterday? Pretty much for the same reason she is today. Thanks for the drink. changed. So what does this mean? It means I don't feel like signing these papers today. I may feel like signing them tomorrow, but I definitely don't feel like signing them today. Then you shouldn't. in the Hardy case gave me some of their albums. Truth is, though, I used to listen to them a lot. Oh, I forgot. You did have your communal years. Unlike you. Not me. I made no claims to having participated in anything. Congratulations on the trial, by the way. Yeah, it was uh, <clears throat> less than wholly gratifying. Why was that? Well, we beat this guy who did all these terrible things in the 50s, right? If this were the 50s, I, I might think he was right. Then you'd both be wrong. You were never wrong, were you? Yeah, plenty of times. Huh? You mean among the macrobiotic diets and the doctrinaire Marxism and the sexual promiscuity and the Grateful Dead, you actually made a mistake somewhere? Yes, absolutely. 
Good. I'm going to go take a bath. Only knew how.